This is the part two of the violin bow techniques. Continuing from the previous episode, I'm going to cover seven articulations and the techniques today. Again, I group them in a particular order so that you can compare, identify, and understand how to play them easier and faster. The third group is the most confusing one. It consists of marcato, accent, sforzando, fortepiano, modulet, staccato, and flying staccato. They are very similar, but not quite the same. Let me group them into three subgroups and explain to you. Both marcato and accent are not bow strokes. They are articulation markings, which require emphasis. The notation for marcato can be a horizontal wedge, or a vertical wedge, or the abbreviation mark on the note. You will usually see a horizontal wedge for an accent. A vertical wedge might appear to require greater loudness and a sharper attack than the horizontal wedge. Both marcato and accent require a player to play a particular note, a set of notes, a chord, or a long passage with louder dynamic and a more emphasis, stress, attack, and force in the beginning of the note. Marcato is often with respect to a melody that is to be made prominent. Marcatissimo means extreme marcato. You don't necessarily stop the bow and disconnect the next note after an accent or marcato. It depends on the musical context. Let me give you a few examples. For marcato, the first example is from the second movement of four C interludes by Benjamin Britten. In this excerpt, I play with more attack and force with shorter strokes. The second example is from Lincoln Portrait by Aaron Copeland. In this excerpt, I play with more emphasis and stress on the melodic line with longer strokes. The third example is from the West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein. Marcardo appears in the pizzicato section. I play it with louder dynamic and emphasis in the beginning of the notes. Since the nature of the pizzicato makes the sound fade out faster. For accent, here is an example of Denzo No. 2 by Arturo Marquez. I'm going to play the first part. Although there are no dots on the accent notes, I play them short because of the musical context. The rest of the notes are off the string with a spiegato stroke, so I also play the accented notes off the string with a spiegato stroke, but with more emphasis in the beginning. They are not connected to the next note. The Second part is different.
musical. I play everything on the string, so the accented notes are also on the string. They are connected to the next note without stopping the bell. Both sforzando and forte piano are dynamic markings. Sforzando means suddenly with force in Italian. It is a strong and sudden accent on a note or a chord. You will see the abbreviation SFZ, FZ, or SF on the note. The example on the left helps you understand it better. You play with an accent in the beginning, and then you still play it loud. Forte piano literally means loud, soft in Italian. It is a sudden dynamic change. It starts with an accented attack, followed immediately by a soft sound within the same note. FP is the notation for forte piano. For sforzando, here is an example of the third movement from Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. For forte piano, here is an example of the first movement from Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. Both Mardelay and Staccato are bow strokes. You play both of them on the string. Mardelay means hammered in French. It is a percussive stroke with a sharp accent at the beginning of each note, and there is always a stop between each stroke. The accent in this stroke requires preparation of preliminary pressure. A quote from Ivan Glamian, the bell has to pinch the string before starting to move. After you execute the pressure with fast bow speed, you immediately release the pressure and let the bow travel. The common mistake is you release the preliminary pressure too soon or too late. Thus, it sounds either no accent in the beginning or too scratch the whole time. Mardelay may be notated in more than one way, with dots, hammerheads, or accents. The hammerhead is the most common one. There are a few steps to practice Mardelay. First, the preparation exercise without the bell. Try this with me. Try to feel the pressure from your index finger and use fast speed in the beginning and then release immediately. Second, put your bow on. We start with open strings and then go to scales. Put your bow in the middle, do a quick stroke to the tip and another stroke back to the middle using the same hand movement and fast bow speed that we just did. Make sure your bow is straight and you are playing on a good contact point. After this, you can try the same exercise for the middle and lower part of the bow. <laughs> Lastly, I play modelly with string crossing. Row number one caprice is a good exercise. Practice without the trio first, and then add the trios. I suggest you to play with the metronome from slow to fast tempo. I suggest from 70 to 120. Here is an example of the first movement from Villotom's number 5 violin concerto.
Staccato means detached in Italian. It is a detached and a short stroke. You play it on the string. The notes in staccato are shorter than the notes in rondelet. The notation for staccato is a dot on the note. Staccato does not mean that we heavily attacked the note, unless there is an additional marking, like an accent, marcato, or sforzando on the note. A wedge is used for the more emphatic staccatissimo. You play the notes extremely separated and distinct. A superlative staccato. Here is an example of the first movement of Brahms' Number One Symphony. Here is another example of the third movement of Bruckner's D minor symphony. By now, you may be a little bit confused because all the strokes that we have discussed so far sound and look similar to each other. To clarify, I'm going to play two selections from the first movement of Wieniawski's Number、no. Two Violin Concerto to help you distinguish them. Pay attention to different articulations and both stroke markings on the music while watching me play. When you are playing a fast succession of marginale notes in one bow, then you are making a flying staccato, which is commonly called the up bow staccato. Again, the bow always stays on the string. There is a down bow staccato in solo violin repertoire, like the Hora staccato by Grigoros Dinicu, but we rarely see it in orchestral repertoire. Both up bow and down bow staccato are very virtuosic techniques. You should always control the movement of the beginning of each note. Try this preparation exercise without the bell first. My index finger and thumb use more strength than other fingers, and the wrist is rotating with them. The rotation is fast. Make a strong emphasis on the beginning of each note. Let's try together, from slow to fast. Now let's put the bow back on and play some exercises of open string. Like we did for the preparation exercise, string crossing becomes more challenging in up bow staccato because the notes are very fast. Make sure your arm is anticipating fast enough to the levels of different strings. Kreutzer's Etude Number、no. Four is a great exercise. Practice with the metronome from slow to fast. I suggest from seventy. To one twenty.